Well guys, it has been one year professionally as a software engineer or software developer. And I have to say it's pretty surreal. Uh, I got my actual offer letter of February 26, 2013. And to my memory, I believe I actually started on the tw um, March 16th, but it could be a couple of days before that. But it has been one year having a job. And a lot of these uh, videos usually they say one year in tech, but it's also when they are learning. It took me about eight, nine months to get, or maybe 10 months to get my actual offer. Uh, but I actually professionally been working and getting paid as a developer or engineer for a year now. So that is what this video is about. And I'm just going to talk about my experiences, what I've learned, any recommendations I've had, and um, yeah, just chat with you guys. So this video is totally not scripted. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, the, the journey is pretty tough. Um, coming from where I was, I didn't know anybody in the tech industry. So everything I've learned has been through YouTube, through uh, online courses like Free Code Camp, Odin Project, Udemy, and YouTube tutorials pretty much. So um, I didn't pair a program with anybody until um, I started doing interviews pretty much. And I didn't really have a live coding session until maybe November um, or December so of 2022. So, um, and that, I did learn a lot from that experience, but I was, it really wasn't a lesson, it was more of a test. So. It definitely was kind of lonely breaking in and now I'm in somewhere different in the Silicon Slopes, which is in Utah. And there's a lot of tech people and I work hybrid. So in person, I do pair program with uh, some of my team sometimes. So it's just been a different experience and it's, it's been cool to actually communicate and work with other people to do the same thing as me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been surreal. Um, I've gone from my first role where I was strictly back end, even though I spent most of my time in those 10 months learning front end, um, to now being full stack and doing, I would say, 70, 30 front end to back end. Uh, so it's it's been crazy to now I'm working on my own applications on the side. I was doing small projects to learn, but now I'm, I'm working on Talo, which there's a video up here to kind of see um, what I've been working on there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a crazy uh, turnaround. Um, also coming from sales, everything being commissioned and inconsistent to going to hourly with my first job, which was good pay, to now salary. Uh, so just a lot has changed since May of 2022, and um, I'm just super grateful. So some things that I've, I've learned, one is it's okay to not know things because not even just a junior developer, just in general, is I've realized working with senior developers is that they don't know everything either, but they just have this great skill of learning things fast and figuring things out. And it's okay to tell people you don't know things and get in touch with the people that do know what you need to learn. Um, and a lot, I've also learned how to learn faster. Um, when you learn one program language, I think that's like the, fir the first one is the hardest. But after that, I feel like it gets kind of easier because you know what you need to learn. Certain things kind of, certain concepts are kind of consistent over other languages and some things aren't and they're very specific. But a lot of times you're just learning the syntax and the setup and the folder structure and just things like that with a new technology or I should say programming language. Um, but I've learned I've learned to learn things a lot faster. So that has been a, a skill that I've gained over the last year. Um, also writing good documentation and, and learning how to use things without being uh, my hand being held for everything. Again, I have an awesome team in my current job that helps me with a lot of things that I didn't know. But I'm also things that I'm curious about or things that I need to learn. I'm able to take the initiative now to learn things myself at a much faster rate and figure out what I need to gather out of something and not necessarily the whole thing. So um, that learning in general has been a lot easier. Um, also just trying to retrain my mind. Um, one thing my management is working on is as a junior, we're just focused on solving the problem. And then as you get higher up in the company uh, hierarchy, you start asking yourself, is this the best way to do something? Is there a better way? And then you start learning, why are we doing things? Do we need this? What, what, what can we do to make our processes better? So I've been trying to retrain my mind to work a little different and then just a little bit bigger picture other than just learning how to program in JavaScript or Python or whatever. Um, but is this the best language to do something? Is it the best library to do things? Is there a better way we can do this? Can we write this in less code? Should we document this? Is this a service that we even need? And just doing more questioning and documenting what I do. 
Um, and that's one reason why I do a YouTube channel too, is to document my growth and what I learned as well to share with you guys, and honestly, for my memory's sake. Um, also, what I have learned over the years is when you do projects, um, I think it's easier to complete them when you actually care about them. When you're doing uh, little weather apps, it's cool at first when you're first learning, but after a while, when you start getting these complex problems, if you don't care about what you're solving, or if there's not a why to what you're doing, then I tend to drop those projects. Um, for instance, I did a CRM project before, and I'll probably share it. Um, it was cool. It was, I, lear I learned a lot, but um, there wasn't really a use for it. And I think when I did Brokersphere, which was one of my, it was pretty much a platform where people can share uh, referral leads if you're a real estate agent. And it was kind of like a social platform for real estate agents, but they also can monetize it by sharing leads. And um, I never actually released it, but I did complete it. And it was the first major project I did and actually helped me land the job, my first job. And I care, I did it because I cared about it more. Then I've done some other projects where I was trying to learn a certain programming language. Talo, I was actually trying to learn Go and I built my backend with Go and that helped me get things across. Um, I wanted to learn some mobile development. So that was the reason why Talo got across. So when you're building projects in the beginning, it's fun to do little things, but think of stuff that you actually care about or maybe the company you're applying for cares about and build stuff around that. And that will allow you to build cooler projects and be more focused and get them across the finish line. Um, another thing that I, I've learned is that you have to be ad adaptive. Um, when you go through boot camps or college or you're self-taught, you go through this roadmap of, I gotta learn HTML, CSS, then JavaScript, then React, and whatever, and the reality is when you're gonna use whatever your company needs you to do and requires you to learn. So, um, I won't get into what my company uses because I don't know if I can share that, but what I will say is two companies in a row, I did not use all the technologies that I was used to. And I had to learn really fast some of these gaps in my knowledge. And that skill is more valuable than you learning a specific roadmap. So I do think you should follow roadmap in the beginning just to kind of get yourself in a, in a learning direction and get some general skills. But be focus more on your ability to learn new things um, and to adapt because your job may have you use multiple languages. Your job may have you use a different framework than the one you're used to. So and the process for my first job is totally different than my second job. So you have to be able to adapt to the work environment that you're in. Um, and it's, that's, that's the main things that I think I've learned. I've also learned obviously a lot of different uh, technologies. I was really big on MongoDB, now I'm really big on Postgres. Uh, uh, when I started learning I was on JavaScript, now pretty much everything is done in TypeScript for me. Um, I know multiple backend languages, um, I would say I'm not necessarily prof like super proficient in every single one, but I could probably get a job in one or two of them. So I definitely have learned a lot of different technologies, learning about microservices and different uh, just architectural and system uh, systems. Um, I've grown so much knowledge and that's great, but I feel like my mindset is what I gain more and just the confidence in my abilities that I actually have value for a company. So. You gain a lot in one year, and I hope this is motivation for anybody else that you can do it. I applied for months to get jobs. I almost went through a boot camp. I ended up dropping out just as I almost gave up on a self-taught path. I got a job the second day of school, so I ended up not doing the boot camp. So um, whether you do the boot camp, college, or whatever, it doesn't matter, but my point is don't give up. If your goal is to break into tech, you can do it. And if you're a junior developer or engineer level one, and you have this huge imposter syndrome, don't let it stress yourself out. I have it all the time, but it does get better. Eventually you do get confident as long as you're in a good environment that helps you thrive into growing and learning and just becoming your best. And, you know, just believe in yourself that you can get there. So I know that's kind of like cliche, but I definitely think, I hope I was an example that you can break into tech and change your life within a year. So um, that is this video. It's kind of a rant. It was very quick. But um, I, again, plan to be more consistent on this channel. And if you like more videos from a realistic standpoint of being in tech or breaking into tech, I think my channel is perfect for that. So if you want to, subscribe. If not, no hard feelings. But thank you for watching the video, and I will see you guys next time.